Hi, welcome to Bar Cart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about Fevered Star by Rebecca Rowan Horse. Fevered Star is the second book in the Between Earth and Sky trilogy, which began in 2020 with the critically acclaimed Black Sun. I had a great time with Black Sun when it was released and have been eagerly awaiting Fevered Star, which was a true delight. After I'd finished the Chorus of Dragons reread that we've been doing our extended series on here on Barkhart Bookshelf, I found myself in a bit of a reading slump. And I tried reading books from different genres, trying to find something that was just going to hook me, and nothing really was catching my attention. And then my pre-ordered copy of Fever Star arrived, and I said, like, yes, this is exactly what I need. What I need, and what I needed, was just some more epic fantasy. And it was absolutely delightful. Very different from Chorus of Dragons, very different from Discord of Gods, but still scratching some of that same mental itch uh, and getting me back into doing some uh, good reading again. So, Fevered Star, it picks up right where Black Sun left off, in this world of interconnected cities inspired by the cultures and mythology of Mezzo and Central America, and is deeply political, all of those good, gooey, crunchy things of epic fantasy, of the idea that there are people with certain types of personal power, and then issues of state power, really concerned with the movements of nations and city-states, while also cast in the heightened personae of these grand individual figures. And one of the things that I thought worked really well with Fevered Star is this uh, disconnect some of the time between your personal power and your structural power. The idea that some of these characters who have uh, literally divine power and divine authority are on the back foot, uh, aren't able to marshal their resources in the face of some of these uh, longer-standing structural power modes, uh, which was a real delight and fun to, fun to chew on. Plus, there are giant crows that people fly around on, giant golden eagles, and as a child who read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell at an impressionable age, if you give me a Corvid-themed character like uh, Serapia, one of the main characters, I'm gonna have a good time. So there's a lot to offer in a lot of different ways, and I'm really eagerly awaiting the final volume when it comes on along, um, and hopefully do a little bit of a full series reread, then revisiting uh, the drink that we're gonna make today. Highly recommend Fevered Star if you've already read Black Sun. Uh, if you haven't read Black Sun yet, get out there and get it. It's doing some really innovative, wonderful things with epic fantasy and uh, is just uh, a very memorable book and one that I was glad to, to revisit in the sequel this past week. But we're here to make a drink, so why don't we get on to that? Our drink today, you can see we've got the mixing glass, it's been a while since we've stirred it up, um, is a stirred cocktail in honor of Fevered Star, and it is called Swallow the Sun. So we're going to get started. One of the things that you see in the book is uh, the sort of indigenous spirit that they're using. The uh, primary liquor is something called Stabentum, which is very difficult to find in my neck of the woods. Um, one that I've sort of wanted, an ingredient that I've sort of wanted to try, but haven't had the opportunity to yet. And um, I figure if it's difficult for me to find it, it's probably difficult for all of you out there to find it as well. If you end up with a lead on some Stabentum, I would love to hear about it because, as I've said, there are two more books in this trilogy, uh, one before and one after, that uh, I would love to use the ingredient in. But I read a lot about Stabentum and um, I've thought about 
how to bring some of those same flavors and ideas into our cocktail, which is what we're going to do now. Now you'll notice I've been holding this jigger for a while, so we're going to get that poured in there. That's one ounce of the Overproof Hurricane Proof Rum as our base spirit. Stabenton is a sort of rum, anise, honey liqueur that you see in um, Mexico and Central America, and those are the flavors that we're really going to be playing with here. So we've got one ounce of our Overproof Rum, Hurricane Proof, uh, one of the things that was sort of in my mind with this was there's this nation of sort of mermaidy sea women, the teak, so uh, the stormy Hurricane Proof Rum, uh, I think, sort of plays with some of those same ideas as well. Nice there. We've got an ounce of that in. Going to give us a nice bite. Then, a familiar friend, we've got some creme de cacao. Uh, they're using cacao as a sort of currency in this book. Um, and so, of course, we've got to get some nice dark chocolate in there. Really rich, fruity flavors, bringing some sweetness, but it is a liqueur as well, so it's still going to have some of that alcoholic bite. Now, to balance that out, we've got some honey syrup. As I've said, rum, anise, honey, um, and so we've got to have our honey. And this is just a syrup. It's going to soften things up. We're going to get three quarters of an ounce of that in there. Going to be nice and sweet and rich. It's going to add some texture as well because um, we have the sort of viscosity of the honey balancing out the uh, thinner quality that we get with uh, alcohol, with the ethanol. Though we do also have some uh, oils as a result of the creme de cacao that we make. You can see down there at the bottom, we've got some of those cocoa fats. Uh, really nice, rich, dark chocolate. So we've got our rum, our chocolate, and our honey in there. Got to bring the anise with my personal favorite ingredient of all time, absinthe. Um, primarily flavors of anise, wormwood, uh, those sorts of things, those really uh, licorice sorts of ingredients. And we're just going to get a quarter ounce of that in there because a little goes a long way. There we go. We've got that in there. That brings us to our full three ounces that we typically expect with uh, a standard cocktail build. And we're going to add just a touch more. Got the chili liqueur here, one that we've used before, um, and we're going to get a bar spoon of that in there. You'll notice I'm measuring over the jigger here because uh, this is quite spicy and we don't want to end up spilling more than we want into the mixing glass. So we get just a bar spoon. Certainly, if you like the spice, and the spice is right, um, feel free to measure directly over your mixing glass. Just understand that if you do that, you might get a little more of a kick than uh, you would if you measure over your jigger. Now, we've got all of our ingredients in our mixing glass. Nice, rich, red, good spice, good honey, good balance. And we're going to add our ice, which is going to work to mix our ingredients. Lovely and dilute the cocktail, which is nice when you have uh, things that have a little more potency, like the absinthe, like the overproof rum, uh, that ice really does help to balance things out. So don't be afraid to stir this a little longer than you might some other cocktails, uh, just to get a touch extra dilution in there. But we want to stir, as is typical, for about 20 seconds, just a nice even stir, keeping the spoon against the wall of the mixing glass. Really love the sort of coil on the bar spoon. It makes it so much easier to do that simple stirring motion. Uh, very comfortable in the hand. Wonderful. Now we've got our ice about even with the liquid, so we know that it's good and stirred. We've gotten some good dilution in there, and we'll get our julep strainer and our glass. And we will just strain in there. can use the julep strainer because we have 
not shaken it up. We haven't really broken that ice up. So we're able to just use these larger holes compared to when we get our Hawthorne strainer with our shaken cocktails. But that's for another day. So here we have it. Swallow the Sun, a stirred cocktail in honor of Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. Fevered Star is on bookshelves now, as is Black Sun, the first book in the Between Earth and Sky trilogy. Got links to find both down below, as well as to the Boston Shaker, where we get all of our tools and ingredients, the spoon, the mixing glass, everything. Um, got links to Twitter and Instagram, where there are written versions of today's recipe. You can check them out. And uh, please remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell so that you never miss an episode because we've got new cocktails and mocktails coming every week. Try the drink. Let me know what you think. Hit those comments down below. And until next time, cheers.